What do you experience when, for example, you know you've done something wrong, you've sinned against God, and you know it. One of the beautiful things about being a Christian is that we know we've sinned against God. It's, it's one of those things that the Holy Spirit does inside of us. Well, it leads us to repent, right? That's what God wants us from us. He wants us to repent. And then there's another response that goes along with repentance, penitence, uh, fitting with our theme, and that's called contrition. Now, what is contrition? Contrition simply means is that sorrow, that grief that we experience as a result of knowing we have sinned against God. Contrition leads us to behavior. It, contrition usually leads us to behavior of saying, I'm sorry, God, for what I have done. Please, please, God, forgive me. Today we're going to be looking at Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. Now, both of them were members of the ruling council. They were both of them members of the Sanhedrin. Now, Nicodemus we know about. Nicodemus in John chapter 3 came at night to visit Jesus. Now, theoretically, he could have been on a fact-finding mission, but I believe that Nicodemus was going there because the Sanhedrin was so against Jesus, he had to find out for himself why. And in that encounter with Jesus, he became a believer. He became, in a sense, a closet believer. He did not want to expose himself. And the same thing happened with Joseph of Arimathea. Now, the simple fact that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus are here at, to bury Jesus tells me a couple of different things. First of all, it tells me that they were both believers. And John says it's as much in, in John chapter 19, verse 38, which tells us, after these things, meaning after the crucifixion and death of Jesus, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So he took his body. It's an act of contrition. I believe that Joseph of Arimathea, along with Nicodemus, both of them buried Jesus, felt so full of sorrow and grief for their participation in the crucifixion of Jesus that this was their act of contrition. They couldn't do anything else. So what could they do? They couldn't say to Jesus, Jesus, I'm so sorry for not standing up and saying, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I am so sorry for not proclaiming and professing and being bold about my faith and, 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 and hiding my faith in the corner. Jesus, I'm so sorry they couldn't say that to him. Jesus was dead. So this is the next best thing. They gave Jesus a burial. They gave Jesus a clean, fresh, new tomb reserved for those really who were wealthy and who could afford tombs. And the theory is, although scripture does not say, but the theory is that this was Joseph's own tomb that in which they laid Jesus. It's as an act of contrition. It is Joseph and Nicodemus' response to the faith of God. And the question that I have for us is, how do we respond? How do we act out our contrition? How do we show Jesus that we are sorry for our sins? Because in our sinfulness, we have denied Christ. We know this. This is nothing new to us. But how do we show our contrition? How do we show God that we are truly sorry for our sins and therefore will do whatever is necessary to live the life that Jesus gave in, in, in forgiveness. And through his passion, through the passion of Jesus Christ, we have that forgiveness. So whatever, our, whatever form our contrition is going to take, let us be contrite of heart. Let us repent of our sins 
and rely on the passion of Jesus Christ so that the phrase that Jesus spoke to the woman who is caught in adultery will say to us as well, go and sin no more. That's what Jesus says to us too. No more sin. I, tr I trust your, your repentance. I trust your contrition. I see how truly it has this, this sin has affected you. I have forgiven you of said sin and all sins. Now go and sin no more. Go and live the life that you have as a believer. And part of the life that you live as a believer is tonight. Tonight we are celebrating, uh, as we continue the theme, penitence and the passion. Tonight is about grief and hope. We'll be looking at Mary and John, the apostle. And so we'll be looking at that. Please be here for that, 7 o'clock tonight. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we give you thanks and praise for all of the blessings you have bestowed to us. Help us to be contrite in heart. Help us to, to be fully repentant of our sins so that we may fully rely upon your grace and mercy so that we may receive the forgiveness of your sins in our hearts and in our lives and that we may follow the words of Jesus, go and sin no more. And Father, help us by the power of your Holy Spirit to resist sin, to turn our backs on sin, and turn our face toward you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And all God's children say,